Alrighty folks, welcome back to another episode here where we're going to be absolutely killing it as the nation of Austria and of course this episode is going to be a continuation of dealing with the Protestant Reformation. Now in the previous episode we dealt with two centers and in this episode we have already begun a war, if you can see, against Lorraine and that is significant because uh, he is actually allied to Saxony who uh, in his capital city the Second Reformation has spawned. So uh, I actually have Holy War CB against Lorraine because I border him and I've completed religious ideas, of course, anticipating this happening. So that gives me a nice CB that I don't, I don't have to worry about no CBing. And uh, Saxony is small enough to where even if he is not co-belligerent, I can 100% him and enforce religion, which of course it should... Uh, convert his capital city and therefore eradicate the last center but we're hitting two birds with one stone because i also plan to enforce religion on lorraine now lorraine has annexed other territory that i could release like luxembourg as independent princes but the issue with that of course is that uh lorraine's religious unity right now is 100 percent protestant so if I was to release anything like Luxembourg, they would actually be Protestant princes and uh, result in uh, the opposite effect of actually losing imperial authority over time. So this war is uh, pretty self-explanatory. At this stage, I am very powerful. Our manpower is uh, dipping again uh, into an uncomfortably low position. But... Part of that reason is because I have been uh, recruiting troops and I have quite a large amount of troops myself. Of course, with my force limit being extremely high, the economy is booming and really strong at this stage. And of course, we have a whole bunch of subjects that are participating as well. Even Byzantium at this stage is able to uh, actually have a, an impact in these wars. Um, now, speaking of subjects, I'm integrating Norway, as you can see. And of course, that is the main benefit of what I'm interested in there is uh, the clay to be added towards the empire. Now, I want to say one other thing, guys. Uh, the first time around when I did this, like this tactic, and that, that seems like a long time ago now, the first video I made where um, the only major innovative thing in that video uh, of my Austrian video was uh, subjugating Sweden and Norway. Um, I made it clear that you guys have to bridge across the empire into Scandinavia. And uh, the way that I did it that time around, because uh, Sweden did not inherit Gotland, was uh, by actually starting a, another war later on against Denmark when he was nice and weak because he no longer has his subjects, and actually just taking some land. So I think I had the Swedish uh, claim by prioritizing their land uh, or... Uh, Geez, making a province high priority is what I mean to say. And um, yeah, basically coring across from Pomerania into basically southern Scandinavia. Uh, now, the reason I say that is because uh, there is a little bit of a dynamic nowadays, guys, because the way they change the sea tiles around the Baltic uh, to where Estonia or any nation in that region, like the Livonian Order in the beginning of the game, cannot actually join the Empire, which, if you guys uh, recall in the past, they could do. And that is because they don't border the Empire. So, basically, you kind of need Danzig to be brought inside the Empire. But the reason I say this is because if, which is uh, somewhat realistic, guys, that you do... Uh, crush Denmark over time in order to add Scandinavia to the empire, then um, the Baltic regions can join the empire via Finland, uh, actually bordering them. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I don't want people to sort of use that as oversight if you're, if you're stressing out about the fact that um, Poland has taken uh, Danzig and it's going to be such a big detriment because you don't get these sort of Prussian region via feeding the Teutonic Order or anything like that, and even worse, you're, you're worried about the Livonian Order not being able to join. Well, of course, they will be able to join, and uh, that's a pretty significant because that whole region can be inherited uh, freely. They will be able to join if you uh, bridge it out through Sweden into Finland 
and into the Estonian region as well. And of course, there can be some funny business going on, like releasing some Russians and so on, but sometimes it can be a little bit more trouble than it's worth uh, as they're not Catholics and so on. But uh, yeah, of course, just keep that dynamic in mind. Riga is another nation, an independent prince that could join. Now, I'm not sure, guys, that I've been 100% clear. I know a lot of the stuff um, I talked about earlier on, but I just want to reiterate, everybody, that uh, I've been allies with Poland for a long time, and uh, one thing that I do want to do is, uh, speaking of Poland and the fact that they might take Danzig, they might block you out, uh, I don't want to tread on their toes, and uh, I know that when we revoke, they're going to become an invalid rival, but uh, I am trying to maintain, at this stage, We you can see our diplomats there, I've got four diplomats, and at this stage, we, we're doing, well, apparently I'm not being voted for right now, just checking that screen, uh, I wonder why that is. Um, regardless, what you will find with time going on, it, I have integrated a nation, so we have negative three um, uh, diplo reputation, maybe that is it. Uh, regardless, um, you tend to lock down those votes with ease and uh, you typically cap out your relations with the Pope which is significant due to um, gaining those papal, that papal influence. By the way we've pieced out Saxony here which means every center has actually disappeared and um, looking forward to enforcing religion on Lorraine here and uh, we're basically going to be done dealing with Protestantism for the most part which is pretty cool. I like that. Uh, but what I'm trying to describe, guys, is I recommend that if you ally the Poles, you keep one of your four diplomats, right? You get one from being the emperor and, uh, you know, the passing one of the ref reforms and gaining a diplomat, but also one from diplomatic ideas, which I suggest you should have at the stage or at the very least influence. But with that being said, I keep one of my diplomats jammed into supporting our heir inside Poland. And of course, we're going to go for that PU uh, once he finally changes his government type. So with that in mind, we don't want to tread on his toes. And we're not too worried about the fact that he might block us out from that uh, Prussian region. Now, it's not going to be inherited freely as it would if it was part of the empire. Like the Teutonic Order was released then fed in, as part of the empire. But... Nonetheless, um, trying to feed the entire PLC to the Empire can be uh, quite tedious. It's quite nice to just PU them, in my opinion. It can be many, many wars, right? Just due to their size and the 100% war score cost, trying to feed the whole gigantic PLC region to uh, the Empire at a later date. Instead, we're going to go an attempt to just PU them. Now you can see here guys that the first center of reformed has spawned in Ravensburg. So unfortunately that means that I did have to revoke his free city status, but fortunately for me, uh, it is yet another capital city. So um, I guess I lucked out in that regard. So far, all of the centers have actually spawned in capital cities. Uh, so that's nice. Going ahead and going straight into a war here against Ravensburg after the war, war with Lorraine. Now, there could be some exceptions uh, due to some nations just YOLO changing Protestant, but for the most part, we can see here that Protestantism is seriously going to be a thing of the past. Uh, and now Reformed has begun, but it is this one center. And I'm quite determined, if possible, to eliminate this. I reacted immediately because there's nothing uh, holding me back. And uh, I'm quite, I'm hoping, of course, to basically destroy the center before any other nation flips Protestant or reformed, excuse me. Now, I'm not 100% sure which is that because they work really quickly initially, these centers. Not sure where it is working, but if you guys can see there, Switzerland has gone quite a bit savage. He's Really expanded, he's got a bit of ugly border gore going, but he's really uh, occupies a lot of the neighboring provinces, and I, I think that um, some of his provinces were converted to reform, if I remember correctly, as opposed to one of the capitals, like Württemberg, for example, neighboring him. Now, I do remember some uh, issue, which was a little bit unfortunate. I think it's Ulm, 
But uh, one of the nations was actually converted, and therefore his religious unity... Ah, uh, yeah, see, I can see it's converting him right now. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. Um, basically, I knew he was going to switch his religion, but uh, we can see Wussenberg, Ravensburg, and soon-to-be Ulm are going to be reformed. So I think uh, inevitably we end up with just too little uh, heretics for some time here inside of the empire. But uh, yeah, so his country gets converted there to, to reformed, as you can see. And unfortunately, there's no enforced religion because he is Catholic. He cannot actually change his religion while he's at war. So of, of course, when they peace him out, he changes to reform and have a truce with him. So that's pretty unfortunate. But nonetheless, it was a quick, decisive victory. And we took out the first center of reform. And uh, there's only two more to go. But as I talk, talked about in the previous episode, the fact that nations are not inclined to form or switch to reformed means that we might not ever actually have to deal with any other centers uh when you really dominate the protestant reformation to this extent it definitely does have a kind of uh, detrimental effect to the whole movement as a whole but that is a good thing when you are the emperor and you want to be catholic so uh i've got a big smile on my face i hope you guys enjoyed this thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time where we add some more clay to the empire.